I have always been told that cold cameras take better pictures than warm cameras. And I've never actually stopped to question that until today, where I've set up an experiment to see how much of a difference it actually makes. Even the most expensive camera will have inherent built-in noise. It's impossible to avoid. You might have seen this if you're trying to take pictures or videos in the dark. It gets grainy, it gets bloggy. Now this is not an issue for day-to-day -day photography as cameras gotten so good that you don't really notice it. However, it is an issue in astrophotography where you're taking pictures of extremely dim objects. Luckily, astrophotographers have solved this a long time ago by taking a number of calibration pictures and then using these pictures to remove the noise in post-processing. Most of these pictures are taken with the lens cap on, so it would be fair to assume that you can just take them when you get home. But this is where you've been told always to take them on site because your camera is cold. If you take them when you get home, your camera's gonna warm up. And that's where I wanna test how much of a difference does it actually make whether you take pictures when the camera is cold versus when it's warm. First, I set up my camera for standard bias frame shooting with an ISO of 3200 and an exposure time of 1 8000th of a second. I then put my camera in a plastic bag to protect it and I put it in the fridge. I came back about four hours later when the camera was nice and cold, took it out, removed it from the plastic bag and immediately set it up for interval shooting. The camera would take one picture every two and a half minutes over a two hour period for a total of 48 pictures. I made sure to keep the lens cap on during the test and let it sit on my dining room table at room temperature. Two hours later, when the camera was done with all its pictures, I took the SD card, transferred the picture over to my computer, where I, in the meantime, has written a small Python script that would read the average noise level of each of the pictures and plot it on a graph. And here is that graph. I was really happy when I saw this the first time. First of all, we have the x-axis down at the bottom, where you can see we have the time in minutes, we have from 0 to 120 minutes, 2 hours, and on the y-axis we have a, a, a semi-arbitrary uh, noise axis with no real values. It's the, it, it, it takes the, the average um, pixel count, of, like number of pixels, but the number of, of detects that's been on the CCD for each pixel across the whole picture and it kind of sums that together, takes an average, and, and that's what we're seeing here. But it is clear to see that, in fact, it does make a difference. You can see how the noise levels of the camera is increasing as the camera is warming up over time. Now, I haven't been able to measure the exact camera temperatures. That could be interesting to do. It could also be interesting to repeat the experiment multiple times to kind of smoothen out that, that jaggedness that the graph has. Um, to get a clearer result there, maybe do it with multiple ISOs. But in fact, yes, there is a detectable difference between whether your camera is cold around fridge temperature or if it is at room temperature. I just want to point out one last thing, and that is the fact that the y-axis does not start at zero. This can make the graph a little misleading and something I would usually consider back practice, but I did it here to make it clearer to see what was going on. The difference between the colder side and the warm side of the graph is about 5%. So the difference here with the about 15 degrees C difference here that, that spans over those two hours here, it's not, it's not massive, I mean 5%, but it's enough that I think it is worth considering. And if you are into astrophotography, this is the graph that shows you why you should take your bias, your flats, and your darks while you are still outside in the cold and not do it when you come home in your cozy living room. And now you're pretty much ready to go. You can now mount your camera here, log it up, and when the star tracker is on, whatever you're pointing at will now be tracked. During the cooling process, they have actually been heating up the telescope. They were afraid the telescope would cool down too quickly. 